Here's the Viking grave, and here's the Holy Grail, and a failure. So I've been looking for the grave of James Jones for quite a while now. Um, he's got a poet, philosopher, and failure written on his grave, and it's a Celtic cross. But um, I'm all out of ideas. Can't find it anywhere. So apparently he's buried with his two wives, both called Sarah, which uh, is a bit mysterious as well. But I think there's a groundskeeper up here or grave digger, so let's go and have a look. Maybe he's going to know. I'm in, um, well, I'm at St. Peter's Church in Haysham near Morecambe, by the way. Let's go and ask him. That's right, he, he remarried, didn't he? Yeah. Well, he got married three times. Oh, God. Mr. Bull's wedding cake. I wasn't too far off. I was heading in the right well, direction, right. at least. You were right. You think, you know, in summer, you see, you see them go around with this leaflet and they don't get in between where it is. And usually I'm over there giving something to them. And I say, it's all over there. <laughs> I tried to line it up with the background, but I yeah. thought, that man will know. Oh, brilliant, thanks. So unusual, isn't it, to see yeah. failure on a gravestone? Yeah, yeah. 1909. Well, the, the, yes. Mr. Jones got married three times. Right. And he come from Birmingham, he's an engineer. And then I lost trace of him. Mm. I was tracing him online. Oh, right. On, uh, you know, ancestry. And uh, I traced him to Birmingham, and then he disappeared. Wow. And, uh, what sort of date did he go to Birmingham? Well, he's born in Birmingham. Right. And then he left. I think I traced him to about 1880. And then he left. And he went to America, apparently. Bob Fleetwood did a lot of research. I uh, got the grave records and everything. He did a lot of research. He went to America with his first wife, Maria. Mm. Um, and he uh, was a bit of a philanthropist and made quite a lot of money. But lost it all. That's what Bob said. Um, and his wife died over there, so he came. I don't know why he came to Morecambe. And he lived in Hampton Road in Morecambe. And he married the first Sarah. Right. Um, and she died, obviously. So he had this grave dug, thinking that he was going to go in here. Mm. So that poet philosopher failed about himself. Right, right. Because he was a failure, because he lost all his money. Right, gotcha. Right. Um, but he got married again to another Sarah, Sarah Elizabeth, and she died. Oh. So both of them are in here. This grave's full, it's only six, six deep. Um, he, in actual fact, is not in there, he's in between those two headstones. What, the two fairly flat, low, two low ones? Headstones are oh, there, right. there. With a marker or not? No. No marker. According to our grave records, is there. Right. We've got, we know there's all over the shop on this graveyard. Um, so he's there. So he's got the ultimate failure, really. He hasn't got a headstone. <laughs> but didn't end up with any of his wives no, either. No, he could have gone in as ashes, because mm. um, obviously cremating in 1930-odd, but um, he probably didn't want to. So he's, he's in there. Any idea why his wife's died? It seems a bit... No, I don't know why. So have that many wives and yeah, they keep dying. Yeah, it's a bit yeah, odd. Yeah, could have been a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. To do that, I would have to get the... Um, Death certificates and that right. crosses a bit of dosh. Right. But that's the that's that's the grave you're on about. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Thanks for that. I wouldn't have had a clue otherwise. No. 
I wouldn't know where to start with online no, research and things no, like that. No, no. Um, but uh, that's where he is. Thanks very much. Uh, Appreciate well, that. The wives are there. He's in there. He's, I'll go and have He's a look downstairs. at him in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, pal. All Thank right, you. Mate. So there you go, James Jones. He's not here, but both his wife's Sarah. Uh, why does it say 1909? Looks like aged 11. Age 11, that's weird. I'm sure it's just a stone. So there you go, poet, philosopher, and failure. And he is over here he's in between these two um, graves you can see his grave cut there in the middle So yeah, it says failure because he lost everything, including his wife's, and then he's not even buried with them. Right, let's have a, a nosy around the rest of the graves. To walk on it on here, it's on a bit of an angle. May Adelaide Beckett, 1964. William Vivian, pioneer missionary in West Africa, 40 years a minister, born 1926, but no death dates. Isabella, beloved wife of George Dixon, died 1918 and George Dixon 1921. Not really that far apart, are they? But I guess that's what happens to most husbands and wives. They die within a few years later. There's a pyramid one there. The smallest pyramid I've ever seen, but it's still cool. What does that say? George? I can't read that. Wilkinson, maybe? Very cool. Dirty this one, but we'll give it a go. Alice Agnes, the beloved daughter of George and Jane Creston of Haysham. It's also Fanny, aged one year, seven months, and Edith, one year, four months, and Emily, ten weeks. Tragic family loss there. Big old, oh, what's that? Like a little, uh, like a soldier or something. No chance reading it. But look at that, that's cool. Is it a soldier or a warrior? And this one's got a big border to it. William Edward Murray, barrister at law, 1838. 
focus. There you go. The lady bird. Welcome to the Dead Good Nature Channel. These look quite dramatic, don't they, with the rocks in the background? Can't really read it from here. And you're not allowed in. Mysterious archway up it. What is this all about? Could be something to do with the old chapel. That's up the hill here. This doorway... Anglo-Saxon work was discovered in the north wall of St. Peter's Church in Haitian was taken down in 1864 for the addition of an aisle on that, on that side. Ah. So yeah, it was an old church and then it had a church built around it. Obviously a newer one. Let's go through. An old window there. I wonder if that was from the church as well. How cool is that? On a cross. There's a church down there, we will go. Have a look in more detail. There's a little entrance to the old chapel up here. I think oh, that's the official way in. Oh, one second. Oh, look at this. That's in Latin, isn't it? Look at the steps. So worn. God, where are we going? It's over there. Oh, that'll be the way in then. So this is... Uh, the old chapel got the name. <laughs> and look at these. There are more of these I'll show you later. So there's possibly graves for a mother and a child. There's the adult one and the child one there. And that would have been for a cross. So there would have been a big stone cross stuck in that hole. But how cool is that? And there are six more over that way. I think six, five or six. Small graves here. Is it information boards or uh, St. Patrick's Chapel? That's it. Suddenly I remembered. Don't know why. The original Anglo-Saxon chapel at this site is thought to have been established a short distance from the rock cut graves during the 8th century, around 1300 years ago. And that is how it once looked, so it's not massive. But um, there's a the rock cut graves we'll go look at. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, six. Originally covered with heavy stone slabs and the sockets at the head of the graves indicate each one would have been marked with a cross. It's thought that the graves contained 
disarticulated bones rather than complete skeletons and may have functioned as requiries. So more of a, a pilgrimage worshipy type of thing. Um, pause that if you'd like to know more. This is what's left of the chapel. It's still got an interesting archway there on the door. This is inside. How many people could you fit in here? Probably about, I don't know, 10 people? Probably about three people wide, shoulder to shoulder. What that was. And here they are, look at this. I love how the water sits in them, it's like uh, It's kind of like the bodies in there, isn't it? Body of water. You can see the shapes on these ones at the end. Look where the heads were. Look at that. That's where the crosses would be in those square holes, just pegged in. So this place would be well into the Viking sort of era and it said that St. Patrick was shipwrecked off the coast here and came and built the chapel himself but um, the dates don't quite add up for when it was constructed and when he died. It's just one of those tales. Get out of here. Well, Shane, there's not much left, but um, it is over a thousand years old, so we'll let it off. Right, let's head down to the church and see if it's open to check out the Viking gravestone and the Holy Grail. It's not the Holy Grail, but we'll call it the Holy Grail. Just for a bit of fun, lighten up. There's the Viking grave, known as a hogback. It's got rams, rams heads either side of it. There's a man in the middle there with his cattle. And there's a couple of horses on the left. Incredible, isn't it? This, these two gravestones, one's got 1618 and the other 1619. 
It's got the words Rector on it. Eccles. Original windows of the original chapel. And here's the Holy Grail. So it's a portion of a chalice found in a tomb of a rector here who was interred in the southeast wall of the chancel. Who was probably the founder of the Norman part. Look at that. The tombstone there. Old entrance way look. But probably the original one. Show you these bits on the way out. No, I didn't miss them on the way in. It's a stone sarcophagus. Imagine carving that and then lifting it. Not sure what the date would be on that. And then there's a couple of old stone crosses got this one with the date 1698 on it 1696 sorry either way still impressive It's got like a picture of a chapel on it. Obviously lost the cross at the top. Alright guys, that's your lot. I'm off to get some fish and chips. Seeing as I'm by the seaside. So don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.